Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. So in the last tutorial, we started talking about smart markers and just a really quick 10 second review, but watch that video if you haven't. So smart markers are just really normal markers, but they run an action when the playhead goes over them as you're playing the track. So the example I gave yesterday was I want to, when I get to this marker, I want to change this instrument from here to here, create a normal marker. I go to any kind of action and I copy selected action command ID, double click, put an exclamation mark, paste it here and Bob's your uncle. So so now if I play it changes its sounds when you get to the marker. So it ran an action for us. So this very simple system works very well for switching your MIDI instruments. So a few things to keep in mind is if you run the same system for audio, you are very likely to run into trouble because as you switch from one track to another track and record arm that track, you're gonna cause a click because this track is gonna suddenly be record unarmed and this track is gonna suddenly be record armed. This is for live playing where you're playing through the plugins. This always introduces latency. There's not really a way of having no latency whatsoever. However, for me, the amount of latency is more than fine enough. I don't hear it. And people who say they hear it, I kind of tend to doubt them. I can play with it fine. I can play to a click and this is the system we used. Now, what I got here is I set up my Reaper a little bit similar to the way you would set up any kind of real pedal board. So I have my guitar in and on my guitar and I just have a little bit of low pass that gets sent to my pedal board and then that gets sent to an amp. So the first method is very simple. I have this marker here and this marker is actually running two actions and any smart marker can run as many actions as you want. So again, what I have done is that I have two commands and the first action is select track three and that's my pedal. As you can see, the ID for that is 40941, 40941. And then you can put a space on your marker and then run a second action with it. So the second action that I'm running is an SWS action, trigger next preset for effects one of selected tracks. Once my playhead goes through this marker, track three is selected and then the next preset of this plugin is triggered. So basically I have two two sounds, one has a delay on it, one has a fuzz on it, and I can select the first one, start playing my track, and as my playhead goes over this, these two actions are ran in sequence. Now, if these numbers confuse you, you can also add text to this. So track three, next preset, and it can go between the exclamation mark and the first command. And now the text you're seeing is kind of telling you what it does, and you can go ahead and ignore all this extra text that may not mean anything to you, but means a lot to Reaper. So just because people asked in the last video, like how to access smart markers, smart markers, are are not a special type of marker. They're normal markers, but you put an exclamation mark, you put some command IDs here, and they run it when the playhead goes over them. Have I already mentioned that a million times? So all right, let's check this out in action. Okay, so this is what you just heard. And as you saw, the preset changed right here. I also recorded the output of my amp, but as you can see here, there's like a click. And honestly, when you use pedal boards, that still kind of happens sometimes, especially if you have a true bypass pedal. They do this because electric charge kind of accumulates there and then you need to kind of release it by pressing the pedal a few times. But in a live situation, you can't press it a few times because you're in the middle of a song, right? So this happens live. And you know, if you're playing live, if you have, you know, drums going, bass going, all that stuff going, it doesn't really bother anybody. However, if this is super undesirable to you. There's a second method that's better. So this time we have a different setup going and different smart markers. I have my guitar in as always and I have my amp and this time I have two pedal tracks going and my guitar is sending to both of them and then both of them are sending to the amp so the diagram would look like shoop 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 and this time we're doing something a little different to hopefully avoid the click. Instead of changing presets or changing the track we are just muting and unmuting sends. So the commands you see here the first one selects track seven and the other two are mute track send number one, mute tracks and number two. And as you can see, their command IDs match here and here. So 357, 358. And the way they're worded, you may think that you need a mute and unmute, but actually both of these work as toggles. So when I start playing, I have one muted and the other one unmuted. And then once we get through this marker, this one gets flipped muted, this one gets flipped unmuted. And I have the same thing as before. So I have my delay is here. 
and my fuzz is here. So in terms of sound, nothing has changed. But the reason I'm using send mutes is because we have a little bit more control over mutes. Namely, if you go to your preferences and you go to mute and solo, you have track mute fade. When you hit mute in Reaper, it doesn't immediately mute your track. It fades it out. So if you do a mid playback, there are no clicks. And 100 millisecond is the max. Five is, I think, the default. Let's set this to 10. Why not? So every time I hit mute sends, it takes 10 milliseconds for it to fade down, which means that there will be hopefully no clicks. And so another thing happens here, which actually maybe it's better if we start playing and then I'll tell you. Okay, so this time when we record it, let's just solo what we recorded out of the output of the amp and let's check it out. So this time we don't really have a click here. The reason for that is we muted the send and also because I have a delay here. So what happens to a delay? Delay has a feedback buffer, right? So once you cut the send to a delay, okay, the dry sound is no longer being fed to the delay, but whatever still exists in the delay buffer starts to play out. So the tail of those notes does a good job kind of hiding what we're doing, switching our preset and switching the send, but also both mutes are faded in. So it sounds a lot more smooth. And again, for a live situation, it will be barely noticeable. Now I I like that the delay keeps going a little bit once my fuzz guitar kicks in but if you don't like that what you can do instead is on these smart markers instead of muting the sends you go to your amp track and you mute the receives and that way the delay will just be cut off i think it sounds better when you let the tail of the delay ring out and possibly cover whatever weird clicky poppy thing is happening in the middle there so that's it for today and if you think this is too much work in the next episode i'm going to show you how to save some of your most used markers and how to copy paste and keep them on clipboards and stuff like that all with sws so it should be fun a huge thanks to mike for lending us the drums for this video i thought that was a rocking gig man really this is this was just an excuse for me to have a semblance of a live performance because i haven't done it in ages and you know if i play like shit it's not because of latency it's because i'm very rusty because i haven't played live in more than a year if you're streaming your music or if you're just playing a live performance where you want to take your laptop in and use all of your plugins i think the system works it should be more than fine and again in a live environment nobody cares if there's a click okay uh, that's my opinion and if you like the work i do please donate to me via buymeacoffee.com thanks to our most two recent donors mastering in the box and greetu montreal really thank you i appreciate it a lot thank you so much yeah check out mastering in the box as i mentioned yesterday check out his channel if you want to learn mastering in the box and check out greetu because her music is amazing she's completely indie she writes the songs herself and she produces them as well and she makes her own videos and her videos are super cool and some of her songs are mastered by no other than our very own lovely John Tidy and yeah check both of them out support indie artists all of that because it's it sucks to be an indie artist nowadays so thank you Grucho and Mastering the Box for supporting me I hope y'all go and support them everybody support each other all loving and caring until we get out of this mess yeah that's it for today I'll see you soon bye